Dishing up. This time he puts up a wild shot, and the rebound for Domzowski. Duke really starting to assert itself on the glass. Burgess underneath. He's having a big half. Duke by five. Six minutes to play. First half. Alexander gets inside and finally hits one. He's two of eight. And that's his value. In an offense where there's a breakdown, you need someone to create opportunities. Courtney Alexander is as good as they come. He's got to recognize his role, though. He doesn't have to put it up every time he touches it. He's got two other gifted scorers, or potentially gifted scorers. It's Chris Herrod and Terrence Roberson on the floor. Now he's working hard at the other end on Trajan Langdon. And Langdon really trying to muscle him, getting his forearm out there. But it's Alexander called for the foul. You know, Courtney Alexander, when he played in the ACC, averaged about 17 points a game against Duke. So he probably had a few flashbacks here. But this is what he does best. And he creates opportunities for himself to hit the jumper after he's driven to the hole a couple of times successfully. Today, he's forced a number of shots. He's really just put it up as soon as he's touched it. He's got to explore the defenses a little bit, recognize what adjustments they've made, and then have him adjust to that before he can actually go full tilt with his shot. Foul for Alexander, his second, and he remains in the game. McGetty's back in there. Wow. I think the Fresno State defense is pretty much confusing themselves as well. Good movement without the ball by the Duke players. Fresno trying to match up and they're losing sight of some players. But trips before that, Burgess leaked out behind the defense as well. Eli getting ready to check back in for Fresno State. Bad shots. And Alexander just not involving his teammates enough. Langdon for three. Kinds of contact underneath. This one will go against Duke. We we'll take a look at the Fresno State defense. Corey McGetty on the baseline. No one really in front of him. You see Roberson come out a little bit too late. And again, it's just a question of understanding your assignments and the matchup zone of Fresno State confusing them as well. Chris Burgess also did a nice job sealing off his man, giving McGetty a free pass on the baseline. Avery up on Heron. Now Heron goes to work on him, leans in to draw the contact. No call and no basket. And I think that is, is exactly what Chris Heron tried to do. He tried to force the issue to get a call. Wrong guy to leave open, but it just won't stay down for Trajan Langdon. Langdon now 4 of 11 from the field. Take a look at Avery right here again on penetration. Draw the defense in. Langdon wide open. One of the rare misses. But you know they'll try it again. He's a 42% career shooter from three point range. Here's Avery with an NBA three. And Brand tries to out muscle his man for the ball. It comes free. Alexander fouled hard by Langdon. Good clean play by Trajan Langdon went up when after the ball. On the other end, though, Elton Brand almost came up with the offensive rebound. Great range for the big fella. Take a look here. Langdon goes after the ball. He's going to make sure he doesn't get it up, but a good clean play. First on Langdon, Alexander shoots two. Now watch Brand with his range. The ball goes all the way out to the free throw line. Not a lot of rebounders can range that far from the hoop to still get an opportunity, particularly big men. That's what I love about Brand's game. It's footwork. Look at what the Blue Devils did against the Irish last night. 15 of 20 from three-point range, 12 of 13 in the first half. Just one for 10 tonight. Well, a lot of that has to do with the fact that the Fresno State is contesting Duke out there on the perimeter. They're not allowing them to stand there and wait for the opportunity to put one up. They've got to contest it for the hand. Just a three-point game nearing the four-minute mark of the first half. Good showing by the underdog, Bulldogs. And a foul before the basket. Last couple of times down, Avery doing a nice job of taking what the defense gives him. If the guys are going to come up and guard him tight, he's going to walk around them. You like that hat? I like that hat. <laughs> <laughs> No defense there. I assume he's with Fresno State. He's got good seats behind the bench. We've seen a little bit of everything up here in Alaska. They embrace this tournament. Really like, I think, people in, in, in a few other parts of the country do. This is the single biggest event, definitely sporting event. Perhaps event of any in the state of Alaska. More importantly for them, 
for the lap from here. It's there. Yeah. It's way short. You wonder if it was hit if it was short. It'll go over to Fred Hostey. The Alaska fans don't like it because Langdon's their man. Da, 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 da. Please show me yours. You show me. Show me your Tommy. Tommy, the real American fragrance from Tommy Hilfiger. The American Weekend Duffel Bag. Just $22 with any $43 Tommy fragrance purchase. Available at fine stores. It is one of the most powerful warships. From satellite communications, radar and propulsion systems that are the most advanced in the world. But USS Mitcher cannot do a single thing without you. Because the most important part of USS Mitcher is her crew of over 250 sailors who every day embark on a journey of honor, of courage, and of commitment. Call 1-800-USA-NAVY. Let the journey begin. Big Bob's exterminating spiders. Oh, we do spiders. Scorpions? I love the challenge. Centipedes? Centipedes are a uh, speciality. The queen centipede. Bring her on. <laughs> The Bloods are back. Centipede on CD-ROM. Take on five all-new worlds or play classic style. Get your hands on Centipede for PC CD-ROM. Uh, maybe we could talk about this? <laughs> This shootout is the first time Trajan Langdon has played in Alaska since he left East High a few years ago. We asked him if there are other good players to come. I think there are some, and as long as kids uh, understand that you got to work hard to, to be put in the position that, that I've been, you know, placed in, it's not given. And you need to work hard, and, and up here you need to work even harder than the kids down there because you don't get the competition. But there is some, and I think the kids understand that there's going to be some more good players from Alaska. The next good one could be six nine and a half, Carlos Boozer, who last week turned 17. He's a senior, and he has reportedly narrowed his choices to UCLA, St. John's, and Duke. Well, I had a chance to talk to Carlos Sr., who incidentally is from Maryland, and uh, we were contemporaries down there back in the 70s. And you know, he tells me how mature his, his son is, and the fact that he's going to make a decision all by himself. And academics is a very strong factor in whatever wherever college he goes. Brand a good rebound, counted and a foul. That's called asserting yourself. <laughs> Boy, Duke has done that. Burgess with 13 rebounds and Brand with 10 points and 9 rebounds all in the first half. What a night the two big men are having. Well, we probably figured that that was going to happen. I mean, you look at the size differential, uh, particularly from a girth standpoint. Brand and Burgess so much thicker in their upper body than Eli and, and his colleagues on the front line from Fresno State. They're able to use their shoulders to make a lot of room. Fresno State's been very capable of utilizing their athletic ability and their quickness. Dukes by five. Less than three and a half to play in the first half. Fresno State has not appeared to be tired. It doesn't look like they're getting worn down all that much. The question about Duke is much deeper. Well, Fresno State likes to play a fast game, too, but when they get into the half court, as we saw there, they're more willing to be delivered. McGetty commits the foul. Which is a good point against a team like Duke that likes to swarm you, that overplays the passing lanes. What you want to be able to do is get the proper angles, move the ball a little bit, and when you have an opportunity to try and beat them off the dribble, you want to do that. Force the help to come, then you can find some open people. It's very easy to say it rather than do it, but right now, Fresno State's doing a nice job. Taman Domzowski replaces Burgess. Domzowski had a very good night off the bench last night against the Irish. And Burgess already with a career high in rebounds. And we got 23 minutes of basketball still to come. Well, Burgess has kind of filled in that rotation spot that Shane Battier would normally occupy. He said he's been very effective doing what he does best. He doesn't have to be Shane Battier. He's just playing like this first. Eli had the offensive rebound but couldn't connect. So Duke's got the ball and a four point lead. Great effort by Abney to die and knocked the ball out of bounds. He really is the blue collar worker on this Fresno State team. They're Ben Rebounders, 6'8", 
Just 220, but very active defensively. We take a look here, getting around on the high side of the, of the offensive player. A lot of hustle. Having he played over in Europe, he's kind of turning game. He's picked up a lot of confidence in his game. And there's a hold on Heron. Chris Heron is such a, an interesting story, and he's been through so much. Out of Massachusetts, went to Boston College, and then came to Fresno State, has had a variety of problems, left the team for a few weeks last year to deal with a substance abuse problem, had the opportunity to declare for the NBA draft, and decided to come back for his senior season, and really believe on a good note, wants to get a, a whole distraction-free year of basketball in before potentially heading on to the NBA. Uh, do you think he's got a bright year? I do, and I also think he's got an awful lot of gut to do what he's doing to come out here and compete considering a life-threatening problem. He's got to do it one day at a time. Nice look ahead. Eli up and under, and Brand got him from behind. Fortunate. Fresno State in getting the, uh, getting the handle on that ball. A lot of physical play, particularly on the Duke end. Fresno State bench plays are right in front of them. They're thinking that Duke is trying to bull their way through. As I mentioned, the upper body strength allows them to kind of use their shoulders and their arms to bump and grind. And I don't think Tark and his coaching staff like it. They've been letting the officials know. They think there are a couple of charges down there, a couple of pushes. And um, thus far, they really haven't gotten the benefit of those calls. Free throws continue to plague Fresno State. They're 8 of 14 and out. As you saw, Eli struggling just to get to the 50% mark. They could be tied if they've been hitting their free throws. And that's what it's all about. Lost opportunities to get a free when you've got to capitalize. They're down five. Parallel with Heron right out on him beyond the three point line. He has been pounding people on defense. Look at this pressure. Holcomb putting on Gronkowski. Well, they travel. And now it might be the Duke bench that's upset about the physical play. They are letting them play at both ends. Well, I think this is a response to exactly what the Fresno State coaching staff was up and yelling about, that there was a lot of bumping and grinding going on. Rather than make the call, the officials allow them to play. We take a look here. Denzowski on the floor, but look at the swarm by Holcomb. And then a nice job by Alexander. Um, I'll tell you what, Langdon created that that contact right there. That's a good no call by the official. Here's Roberson. Eli left alone, and this was the baseline jumper, and Duke comes back the other way. Langdon wants to slow it down a little bit. When Avery's out of the game, Langdon will be at the point, so he's got some additional responsibilities this year. And it sometimes takes him out of the office. But that's what I mean. Look at Carroll trying to drive. He's got that arm out. Langdon a little bit cold tonight after a red-hot night last night. Fresno State on the run. Oh, man. Man, what are you thinking about there? What do you do? You just take him out? I mean, it, it, Jerry Tarkanian, well, assuming he is trying to tell him to stop taking bad shots, he's not getting the message. Well, you got to bring him down and sit him down a little bit and just tell him, hey, you're going to get your shot. You're going to get, you're gonna get some look. But you got to play together. Make the defense change a little bit. Five second call. More good defense by the Bulldogs. Again, that's swarming D. Take a look at the defense right here. A lot of guys stepping up, trying to play on top of the ball. We see Roberson looking at Langdon. But that's really what caused the five seconds, is that everyone else was overplayed. There's that move that Heron loves, and this time he connects. He drew the foul, and he hit the shot. Coming up on the Courtyard of I Marriott Halftime Report, Reese Davis is going to update you on the North Carolina Tar Heels and Stanford in the championship game of the preseason NIT. You want to be in Kansas in the tip-off classic, and we talked a little bit earlier about Pitt. What a run they're having down in Puerto Rico, beating number 10 Xavier, now number 4 Kentucky. They'll play number 5 Maryland tomorrow. Well, they'll look to try to complete the trifecta. <laughs> wow. I know Gary. I know Gary Williams has probably warned his team any number of times that you know this could definitely happen if they're not focused. But they played well. They matched up with UCLA. Parallel. McGee up there for the rebound, but it comes free to Alexander, who's knocked down, and it'll be Duke ball. And right there, I think the officials missed the call. On the dive, it was Brandon actually pulled Alexander down with him as he was falling. Kept Alexander from getting possession. But a lot of scrappiness, a little bit of testiness on this end. 
And again, Fresno State standing up to Duke, and at this point in the season, I don't think the Blue Devils are accustomed to it yet. They get the final shot in the first half, up by two, 20 seconds to go. McGetty, though, forces the issue, has it blocked. Mike Krzyzewski won't like that, and then McGetty knocks down his man to commit the foul. Not a good sequence for Corey McGetty. And Langdon imploring McGetty to slow down, to recognize the opportunities here. And that's what Langdon is doing as the leader of this team. He's been more vocal than I've ever seen him, particularly when he spoke to the freshman. But the bottom line is McGetty was off balance, never really got the elevation that he wanted on that shot, and then compounded the matters with the inexperience of a freshman to create that uh, opportunity for Roberson to get on the free throw line. And again, compounding matters. It's third foul, and again, it's the the 10th team foul committed by the Blue Devils. Terrence Roberson will get two. But the move from Fresno State. Time after time, they've been hitting one of two every time they get to the line. By getting leads and Nate James comes in. Randy Holcomb in for Fresno State. Replacing Larry Abney. Heron with two fouls also will come out for the final few seconds. Good job by Jerry Tartain, protective guy, and also giving him a little more rest going in. Ball in the hands of Langdon. Nine points and a half, but just four of 13 from the floor. Down to five seconds, and he is way out there. He has to create his own shot. And his shot is up. It shouldn't have counted. And it missed. It looked like that might have counted had it gone in. And the 